check it. How easy to remove a lipoma from forehead? Would you need follow up after? Um, well, Teresa, I don't want to make out as if this uh, surgery is easy. All right, I don't want to make that out because otherwise everyone will do it. All right, but usually a lipoma from a forehead is a relatively simple, I would say, procedure. The problem with lipomas is they can be at any um, depth. So certain areas you can worry about lipomas being quite deep. Now on the forehead, there's not that much between the skin and the skull. So even if it's kind of just on top of the skull, it's not that far away. So you you know you can get rid of a lipoma. So like when we talk about scans and stuff like that, a lipoma on the forehead, as long as it's not like there, sometimes lumps there, we worry about some lumps, they could be something else other than a lipoma. But certainly uh, you wouldn't worry about the depth of the lipoma on a forehead because you, you you know it's not going to be that deep um so in that respect they are easier to remove than maybe in a lipoma on the abdomen or on the back which could be deep to muscles and what have you the thing about the lipoma on a forehead a couple of things we'd have to be uh, aware of is it's going to leave you a scar um sometimes you have laughter lines on your forehead or people do so if you've got some laughter lines on your forehead great we can make it look like one of those laughter lines if you haven't we'll put it in a place where there will be a laughter line um in the future but that's you know that's one thing you're trading your your lump in for a for a for a scar uh, but they usually fade really well to be honest with you when we when we do put it in the line and the other thing to be aware of is there's a couple of nerves coming up here they're called super orbital and super trochlear nerves they come up here and they supply the scalp sensation of the scalp they don't supply any movement so if it's in that kind of area if it's between the sort of medial part of the eyebrow going back if it's in that part of the forehead there's a risk those nerves could be damaged and there's a risk that the uh, um, sensation of your scalp might be uh, altered which is a bit annoying it's not not massive deal but it's a bit annoying when you comb your hair it feels a bit weird so that is a potential if it's kind of in that in kind of that area um but that's something we kind of taught you about but it, yeah in time in terms of the doing it, it's not really it particularly difficult um we do a see and treat thing uh to raise so you can send us a photo so we can get an idea what would be involved come and have it done and then you wouldn't necessarily need to be seen afterwards we do like to follow people up we always send them off the histology uh and we want to make sure the scar's okay but we can do that with phone calls emails uh video calls stuff like that so you wouldn't necessarily have to come back to the clinic for a follow-up unless there was a problem we could do the follow-ups kind of remotely in terms of the um phone calls and videos and stuff like that so uh because it's just making sure oh you, oh actually sorry having said that you would need the stitches removed sorry that would who which would be a week later so if you do live far away and you're not uh, able to come back then you might be able to get your gp to do it obviously we'd happily do it but um that would be the only follow-up you need stitches removed because on the forehead personally i would prefer to use non-dissolvable sutures because that's going to give you a better scar than dissolvable sutures. Obviously, dissolvable sutures wouldn't have to be removed, but it does not give quite as nice a scar. And I prefer to use um, non-dissolvable sutures, which do need to be removed. And they normally we normally remove them a week later. So that would be something you would need to um, have ideally have followed up with us. But if you have a um, if you're unable to, then sometimes we can um, uh, you can ask your GP 